So Clara Ho lay there unconscious, not breathing. She looked to everyone as if she were dead, and rumor ran all over the town, spreading the news of the catastrophe and arousing cries of grief throughout the narrow streets right down to the sea. Wailing was to be heard on all sides. It was like the fall of a city. Charius, whose heart was still seething, shut himself up all night trying to extort information from the maids, especially Claire Ho's own maid. It was while they were undergoing fire and torture that he learned the truth. At that, in, all, in an excess of pity for his dead wife, he desperately wanted to kill himself, but Polycharmus would not let him. Polycharmus was a special friend of his, as Patroclus was of Achilles in Homer. When day came, the council impaneled the journey, jury to try the murderer and hurried the trial on out of respect for Hermocrates, and the whole body politic as well gathered in the town square with various excited cries. The unsuccessful suitors incited the crowd to anger, especially the man from Akragis, radiant and proud at him at having brought off a feat beyond everyone's expectations and something strange happened that had never happened before in a trial. After the speech for the prosecution, the murderer, when his time was allotted him, instead of defending himself, launched into an even more bitter self-condemnation and took the lead in finding himself guilty. He used none of the arguments he could reasonably have used in his defense, that he was a victim of malicious slander, that he was moved by jealousy, that his action was involuntary, Instead, he begged them all, Stone me to death in public. I have robbed our community of its crowning glory. It would be charitable to hand me over to the executioner. That would have been my proper punishment if it had been merely Hermocrates' servant girl I had killed. Try to find some unspeakable way to punish me. I have done something worse than any temple robber or par parricide. Do not give me burial. Do not pollute the earth. Purge plunge my criminal body to the bottom of the sea. At these words, a cry of grief burst forth. Everyone, everybody abandoned the dead girl in sorrow for the living man. Hermocrates was the first to come to Chereus defense. I know very well what, what, that what happened was unintended, he said. I have my eye on those who are conspiring against us. They shall not have two deaths to gloat over. I am not going to give my daughter's spirit cause for sorrow. I often heard her say that she would rather Chariot should live than herself. So let us close this trial, which is futile, and move on to the funeral, which is necessary. We should not give her corpse into the hands of time. We should not let her body decay and lose its loveliness. Let us bury Clarejo while she is still beautiful. So the jury acquitted Chariot, but Chariot could not acquit himself. Rather, he desired passionately to die, and saw every means to end his days. When Polycharmus saw that he had no other means of saving him, he said, Traitor to your dead wife, are you not even staying to bury Clarejo? Are you entrusting her to body to others' hands? Now is the time to make sure that she is buried with costly offerings, and see to it that her funeral is fit for a queen. This argument convinced him. It inspired in him proper pride and serious concern. What description could do justice to that funeral? Clara Ho, as she lay there dressed in her bridal clothes on a beard decorated with gold, bigger and lovelier than in life, made everyone think how, like the sleeping Ariadne, she looked. In front of the bier went, first, the Syracusan cavalry with their horses, in ceremonial dress. After them, infantry carrying reminders of Hermocrates' victory, then the council, and among the citizens, the archons, all escorting Hermocrates. Ariston, too, not yet recovered, was being carried, and he kept calling Clara Ho his daughter and his lady. After this came the citizens' wives, dressed in black. Then there was a royal profusion of funeral offerings. First, the gold and silver from the dowry, beautiful clothing and jewelry, 
Hermocrates added to it a lot of the booty he had taken, and gifts from relatives and friends. Last of all followed Chariot's wealth. He passionately wanted, if it had been possible, to consign all his property to flames along with his wife's corpse. The bier was carried by the young men of Syracuse, and the rest of the population followed it. Amid the lamentations of the mourners, Chariot's voice was the loudest. Hermocrates owned a magnificent vault near the sea. On a ship you could see it from far out. This was filled with costly offerings like a votive building. And what was done in the intention of paying honor to the dead girl started a train of greater events.